And that's official, is it? The Latin yeah. and yes, yesterday, 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 I said. Let's go. So I got three updates for you in this video. Dennis Eplenkov versus David Dadikian. People are wondering why Dennis keeps on getting pinned by David Dadikian. Isn't he like top three in the world already? Then we have Levan Saginashvili's injury and health update. And also, should he still be considered number one arm wrestler in the world? Then we have Rivaz Lutidze versus Vitali Laletin right arm super match confirmed. If you end up liking this video, then please consider giving it a thumbs up. So let's start with the first one. Dennis versus David Dadikyan. At this point of time, these two are going back and forth so much in these practice pulls, serious practice pulls, that this probably is going to be my last video on this topic. Because at this point, it is not worth talking about because these two are monsters and really close to each other. Dennis looks stronger on the right, but on some days, David Dadikyan just overpowers him and today seems to be one of those days. Babkin uploaded a video on his channel Arm Olymp, link will be in the description. And there he talked about Dadikyan and Adam. I've never heard of this Adam guy. He talked about him in the beginning and both Dadikyan and Adam are going to compete at the AMC tournament. Dadikyan is someone who can cut to 105 kilos but he doesn't like to. So probably he's going to compete in the super heavies and there he'll face the likes of Vitali Lalitin and Dimitri Silaev and also the comeback giant, Zaur Pezulaev. So that is going to be a tough day for him. It is the right arm, not the left arm where Dadikyan can destroy anybody in this world. So completely different story. And this Adam guy was really, really strong. There was this weird scenario in this practice pull that Dennis was able to deal with Adam because of the style. And Adam was able to deal with Dadikyan. And Dadikyan was able to deal with Dennis Siplenkov. So kind of a weird triangle where A beats B, B beats C and sometimes it doesn't really work out. I would say I was really happy to see Dennis gain his cupping ability. Or maybe it was just because of the style of Adam. He likes to come forward in a deep supinated hook. That's what he was trying against Dennis Siplenkov and it never works. The best chance that you have is to keep Denis Siplenkov's wrist flat. People say that Denis Siplenkov's hand is so big that it isn't really easy for him to gain this cup. Even against slightly weaker opponents, you will always see Denis Siplenkov with a flat wrist. It looks like he simply cannot do this motion. It's almost impossible for him to do. And that's one of his weaknesses. That's why he was losing his wrist when he was trying to attack John Brzezink and go sideways towards the pad. That's one of Denis Siplenkov's weaknesses and some great arm wrestlers, some great top rollers or defensive top rollers can really utilize that to their advantage. So this Adam guy does 105 kg side pressure and that was showing on the table. Not so much against Denis Siplenkov, Denis got coiled up. We saw that against John Brzezink when John tried to hook Denis. If you get in this position against Dennis, if you let him do that, it's already over. I'm not sure if there is anyone in this world who can beat Dennis from this position. So Dennis was okay against him, but David Dadikyan was powering through Dennis Siplenkov. Kind of a high hook, top roll hook, mixture, side pressure. He looked really, really strong. So my question is, and not my question necessarily, but many people are talking about this. How good is David Dadikyan right now? Because I have not heard anyone, like any top arm wrestler, consider David in the top 10 rankings in the world. So how the hell does he keep on pinning Denis Siplenkov? That's a difficult question. And the best and the easiest answer can be, it's kind of a training partner advantage. Like I mentioned many times in the past, Irakli Zirakashvili is probably the weakest guy that can do the best against Levan Saginashvili, just because he knows him that much through practice. So there can be a similar scenario playing here as well. David Dadikyan knows Dennis really well. Probably that's why he's able to pin Dennis Siplenkov. Maybe anyone else in the world who is at the level of David cannot do anything against Dennis. That's entirely a possibility. It was really amazing to see Dennis pull there. In the first practice pull against David Dadikyan, he looked really charged up. He looked really happy and excited. It's kind of a rare sight to be seen. When Dennis is practicing on the table, he's almost always serious. But to see him happy on the table like that, it was amazing. It felt amazing. So Levan Saginashvili recently uploaded a video on his channel. It was basically about the dangerouses or should I say how to safely use PEDs 
in arm wrestling or in any other sport some people say that when you go to a doctor if you're using steroids and you go to a doctor to consult something and your doctor is jacked it means you're a happy guy it means you are in the right place so that kind of seemed to be the case here as we have seen in larry wheels videos he also does some pd videos with jacked doctors i'm not sure if this guy was a doctor or not but he gives those kind of advices to people so basically the video was about that but Levan mentioned something interesting. He's down to 173 kilos. He used to be 190, now down to 173. Looks like he's taking more care of his health. And talking about his health, Levan uploaded a community post a couple of days ago addressing his recent wrist injury. Hello people. Unfortunately, my last training session, I injured my wrist and have to pull out of the match with Morozov. East versus West 8 he's talking about. I'm so sorry to disappoint you. I'll do my best to heal up and be 100% again. Already started the recovery progress. Nothing is over. Thank you for the support. Nothing is over. This is really important here because many people are talking about this topic and rightfully so, rightfully so. When somebody is like top 8, 9 or 10th ranked in the world, nobody really cares about his injury. But Levan is the mountain. He is the unbeatable guy. So when he gets injured, people want to know how much time he needs to come back to the table because i think arm wrestling rankings can come up with a mutual conclusion or a decision as to how much time the ranking guys should allow somebody to be inactive before he gets removed from the rankings i would say 6 months is way too less and 1 year sounds a little bit too much so somewhere around 9 months or maybe if we are trying to be lenient one year should be okay so let's give levan one year let's ask him if you can compete within one year or not let's not ask him right now because he's injured and he cannot be sure let's ask him about 6 months from now if he can compete in another 6 months then he gets to stay in the rankings but if he doesn't then hermes gasperini or jerry cadret whoever the winner is or maybe revas lotidze if he does something shocking in the upcoming months then he gets to be the champion I think one year should be sufficient and Levan should return to the table. His left arm left left wrist injury isn't really healing up. I'm not I hope it is not the case with his right arm as well. And many people talk about why Levan got so many subscribers suddenly. It is that shot which got like 80 million views. It's entirely because of that. So final update Revaz Lutidze versus Vitali Lalitin. Angin Terzi announced that this match is confirmed for August 26th East versus West 9. At first Angin was thinking that Revaz is going to compete at AMC that's why he didn't ask him to compete at East versus West but then people reminded him in the chat in his live stream that Revaz is not going to compete. He announced that in the live stream with Alex Kodecha. So then Engin immediately sets up a match between him and Vitali Lalitin. I think it's really really amazing to see how much Revaz has really improved. We saw Vitali had a war against Dave Chafee. He lost that match. He could have won, it could have gone either way, but Dave Chafee was the better man that day. And Revaz absolutely destroyed, absolutely demolished Dave Chafee. He didn't even let him slip to get to the straps. That's how strong he was. If we just look at these matches, Revaz looks like the favorite. Vitali is about 6'8, Revaz is almost 6'6. He weighs around 150 kilos. Vitali is 132. So, I think it's a fair assumption to say that Revaz is the bigger guy here. Can he do the same to Vitali as he did to Dave? Maybe, maybe there is a possibility. Vitali will slip for sure, but inside the straps I think Rivas has too much horsepower. Neil Pickup was asked this question by Angie Terzi and surprisingly Neil said that Vitali wins this match. He has him as the favorite. I'm not sure if many people are going to agree with this opinion because of Rivas Lutidze's recent dominance. What do you guys think about this match? Is Rivas really that good? Who wins? Let me know in the comment section. Like the video, subscribe and I'll see you again.